Tenton here, and today I will be discussing the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Box Theory. And by the way, hey, I didn't die in Hurricane Florence, so that's great. Nice to see you guys. That's why I was gone for the whole time, because the internet was dead. But it's nice to be back. It's nice to talk about Smash again. And oh my gosh, Isabelle's in the game. Yes! Isabelle's in the game! I called it. I mean, I thought she'd be an Echo, but hey, I still called it, so that's another checklist on my list. Only person I didn't call is, is Richter. Because let's be honest, no one did. Like, no one at all. For Richter. Anyway, on to more important things. Now, why do I think this theory is kind of BS? Well, the main reason... It's just a stupid theory, honestly. It hinges on the fact that this box art right here is the final box art for the game. And so it hinges all on that. And that they're just, you know, not including... Isabel and Cineror, and what are the characters on the opposite side? Problems with this? We don't even know if characters are on the opposite side. These characters could have just been a cool, oh yeah, let's just throw these guys on the box for all we freaking know. Yes, there could be a pattern, that's true, but we don't know that. There could be characters on the back of the box for all we know. We don't know. That's the thing. I know what you're thinking. Well, there's still speculation, there's theories that would make sense. Yeah, that's true. All of that is speculation and a thought. And that doesn't mean anything. We could all be wrong for all we know. But let, there's also other factors that make me think this theory is complete bullshit. One, Sakurai would not make a box or have a box release that would potentially spoil the final roster of the game. And honestly, does anyone really think that Ken and Incineroar are the last two reveals? Really? Really now. Sakurai is many things, but he is not stupid. There is no reason for him to be going as revealed crazy as he's been if his final roster was six playable characters and five Echoes. Like, look at the reveals we've gotten so far. When the game was announced, we got Inkling. Go to E3. We get everyone else that's ever been in, Daisy and Ridley. Next, we, then he goes two months, we get five characters. He goes another month, we get another character. Why would Sakurai drop five characters in August when he could have simply just dropped maybe like just King K. Rule and the Echo Fighters and saved Simon and Richter? And also, if Incineroar really really the last rep, he would never have dropped King K. Rule as early as he did. King K. Rule would have been... The, King K. Rule and Simon are the two hype characters. They would bring the most hype out of the reveals we've seen so far. Well, them and Ridley, which is another reason, like, for E3, it would make sense for them to drop one big bombshell. But, like, there was no way Sakurai would have dropped King K. Rule and Simon that early. If anything, Isabel and Incineroar would have been dropped early. Like, they would have been the smack, they would have been the reveals at that specific, at that, like, this August Direct. But they weren't. We got King K. Rule and Simon, two of the most requested characters to be in Smash Bros. It doesn't add up. And there is still two and a half months till, re till release, release where Sakurai can add more characters. We all know there's going to be one huge Final Smash Bros. Direct. Heck, this week's saying we'll get another Smash Bros. Direct in October. We'll get another one in November to finish things off. There is no way Ken and Incineroar would cover that much. There's just no way. It doesn't add up. And people also fail to realize that when Sakurai says, don't expect too many new fighters... That is Masahiro Sakurai saying that. That isn't a normal game developer saying that. That is Masahiro Sakurai saying that. And people underestimate how much he can cram into this game. Look at how what he's done to the music. The music files are much larger. There's more... Oh, okay, let's, let's put that wrong. There's more music in this game than there is in the Wii U version. But the data the music takes up is one-fourth what the Wii U version did. Sakurai can compact stuff and squeeze stuff in. This game is 16 gigabytes, for goodness sake. Let's see how much he's got stuffed in this thing. And another thing, I just want to point this out. When making the Wii U version of the game, Sakurai and the devs had three years to craft that. When the Wii, and also they worked on the 3DS version the, all, the entire time. So Sakurai and his team had to split development time and effort among two versions. Where the graphics and the capabilities of the of the different versions are drastically different. This time, Sakurai has had three years to craft this game, but on one version. And his team can focus on the one version. They don't have to split things. 
They don't have to worry about changing the models and downgrading them for the 3DS or anything like that. It's just one solid version. Nothing more, nothing less. Sakurai essentially has twice as much development time as he did with the Wii U version. And we see what he can do with short amounts of development time when he had with Melee. So just imagine what Sakurai can do with three years focused on one singular project. And I know what you're saying. Well, but Tenshon, he has he's already added in all the old fighters, plus all the DLC fighters. They because they weren't originally in the initial game. Yeah, but all of them had previously established movesets. So they, they're not new. Sakurai, like, look at Ryu. His moveset is basically the same as it was in Smash 4. All Sakurai had to do... All, all Sakurai had to do... Wow, grammar is so great today. All Sakurai had to do was simply port Ryu over, update his model, make him a new, you know, official design for the game, and boom, just port over the moves. It, didn't take a lot, it wouldn't take a lot of dev time. Honestly, the the new the veterans probably didn't take that long to make. Probably, definitely a few months, maybe even a year. But the, I doubt the veterans took that ridiculously long to do. Honestly, especially since Sakurai has a whole team working on the game of modelers and like graphic designers and stuff. Like it wouldn't take that long. So when Sakurai says, "Don't expect too many new fighters," and I think he means don't expect as many as we got in like the Wii U version. When the Wii U version has 22 newcomers, if you count the DLC. Which is absurd. That's like almost that's like a, that's oh that's a third of the roster. This time around, we have we have five newcomers at this point plus the four echoes. Does anyone really believe that we'll only get one more of each? That just is absurd, and it's so foolish of a belief. The box theory is wrong, and one of the main reasons it's wrong is because Sakurai has had the rosters for Super Smash Bros. Melee, Brawl, and Wii U. All leaked before release. Do you really think he would give any company any access to the final roster to put it on a box? Do you think he would even tell them? Remember what happened to the guy who leaked the 3DS version of the game? And leaked the entire roster? Nintendo sued the crap out of him. Nintendo is not <laughs> going to take that risk. Heck, most people working at Nintendo don't even know what the final roster is because Nintendo keeps it hush hush because they know how easy it is to leak information. They're not gonna give people designing this box the final roster. This box was most likely made with the roster of the August 8th Direct in mind as a prototype for the final game. There's, it's not the final version of the box. And this box, the characters on the side, also this is is this this box isn't even the first design. I'm going to leave a link in the description to a post that I've seen where it shows that the box originally, back, back when there were less characters, had all of the Miis separate to fill up space. This box art is not the final box art, guys. And this box art honestly doesn't mean anything. It's a stupid theory thought out by people that are trying to get more Smash information and more discussion. It's, no, it's not going to be true. We're getting more than one newcomer. And one Echo Fighter. There's no way that Incineroar is the final reveal. The final reveal. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. And based off everything Sakurai has been doing, it would not. It doesn't work. King K. Rule and it's, King K. Rule is far more important to Smash than Incineroar will ever be. Ridley brings far more hype to Smash than Incineroar could ever in a million years. Simon Belmont and the Inkling bring so much hype and interest in Smash. Incineroar doesn't. Incineroar is just another Pokemon. Sure, he's a Gen 7 Pokemon, and Pokemon fans will be happy about it, and some Smash fans will be happy about it. But Incineroar is about on par with Isabelle in terms of hype. They just don't bring it to the game, which the other characters do. It's just not the same level. Anyway, guys, what do you think of the box theory? Do you think it's right? Huh, I hope you don't, because it's probably not. But if you do, eh, that's your opinion. You can have it, even if you're wrong. Anyway, guys, talk to you later. This has been Ten Ton. And uh, why do I always record videos at 12 at night? That's the real questions we have to ask ourselves. Anyway, see ya.